Hey, welcome to All-Stars. I got the All-Star right here, Joshua Williamson. We're back, baby. It's happening. Uh, yeah, it's it took a little a, bit of a break. A long, but... It's been a, a few weeks. It's been a while. But yeah, uh, we both had a lot going on. Was, That's there's right. There's always That's... something. Yeah, you, uh, something going on. You, you, you got hit hard by a storm recently. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can start talking about that. I mean, you know, it's Please, funny. Like, yeah. As you know, I write a lot of comic books. And uh, I do a lot of work. And the trick to that is the, the, the hard lesson that I have learned this year is that when you write a lot of books, uh, nothing can ever go wrong in your life. <laughs> <laughs> or it will put the brakes on everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about the, the movie The Birds and how The Birds essentially is about um, how things will just randomly happen in your life. And there's no explanation or no reason. They'll just randomly happen. That's like, that's what that movie's about. It's basically yeah. how like... Because being a part of the movie is everyone's having these mundane things or trying to plan parties or trying to plan stuff. And then suddenly the birds just go crazy and start attacking. Like, that is 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 life a lot of times. This mm. idea that you're like, I'm trying to plan all this stuff out. And I mean, it's so funny because I'll do this thing where I work out my schedule and I go, this is going to work. I can do this as long as nothing happens. <laughs> Literally nothing. Like, as long as there's no <laughs> nothing, outliers. Nothing. No one can knock on the office door because that's going to ruin everything. <laughs> Um, and so what happened was, dude, it was so crazy. So like, I wake up on uh, a Saturday morning and I'm feeling sick. Like, I mm. feel like I have a cold or something, right? Just, okay, just yeah. rocky kind of thing, you know? And it might have been exhaustion. I don't know. But I was like, all right. So tell my wife, I'm like, I'm going to stay in bed a little bit this morning, right? Like I'll hop with the kids around lunch and after lunch, but let me just have these few hours in the morning to just sleep in bed. Right. Totally. And while this is happening, we also woke up to a snowstorm. So it's snowing. Yeah. And they and and Portland is not built for snow, even though it snows every year now. And they warned us. They said, like, it's going to snow uh, this weekend, right, this week. There's going to be a snowstorm and an ice storm. I don't think anybody was ready for what that actually meant. Right. And so I, I, I fall asleep. And suddenly I hear one of the kid monitors starts beeping. Which usually means that the 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 actual cameras upstairs for the kids have been unplugged. Oh, and so I'm like, one of the kids must have unplugged it. That's whatever. It's fine, you know. Back in, <laughs> it's snowing outside. I'm like, I'll go out there at some point. And then so it was 11 a.m. and my wife comes in and she says, the power is out. Like the whole neighborhood, the power is out. The whole neighborhood. Yeah. And it's getting, you know, it's getting really cold outside. It's supposed to get down to, you know, like 11 degrees outside. Yeah. And not only does it get down to 11 degrees outside, but it's supposed to be really windy and, you know, the whole thing. And uh, we're, we're going into a, a pretty good uh, snowstorm. And I was like, well, you know, this happened last year. And the power was back on by 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. So let's see how today goes. That was a mistake. Yeah, you should have uh, fled. <laughs> we did not get power back until the following Thursday. Ugh. And that meant we had we had lost, uh, you know, that meant heat, that meant hot water. That yeah. was like everything. I mean, it was just, and that night, I mean, it got so cold in our house on Saturday night. And it was like me. So I had like my son with me and then uh, my wife had uh our daughter with her and so we were just like keeping the kids like we each have our kid to be responsible for basically <laughs> yeah and um and so it was it was crazy and so we we're like the power did not come back on and so it was then it was like this adventure right where it was like okay well we're gonna go stay in a hotel for a couple nights and see how this goes and you need to find a hotel that has power we get there the whole neighborhood's out of power i'm sure that was a nightmare trying to dude, find it was the whole neighborhood it was portland oh, like right. huge yeah was portland and then <laughs> you find out dude it was crazy like on the news, there are any stories about like trees falling and power lines falling. We had so many trees fall in our neighborhood, and I'm talking about huge trees fall in our neighborhood. And it was sad. It was definitely like uh, 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 you know kind of depressing to like walk around my neighborhood. When I finally got back home, I'd walk around the neighborhood and I would see trees had fallen on houses and, and the damages had been done to the houses, and it was really like a bummer. And at the same time, I was like, holy crap, how lucky we were because it was like even with um like we were lucky well, even with the hotel it was crazy it was like me my kids my wife and then our mother-in-law was staying with us in the hotel it's like one hotel room oh God, okay. and I'm like, this is not sustainable we can't do this but what was crazy is because i had i had like misplanned because i'm like well this only lasts like a day or two yeah no so 
uh, the hotel was nuts, dude. Like when we got to the hotel, and people were showing up, being like, "I don't have a reservation, but I need a room," and they're like, "Sorry, they're like we have no place to go." And it became this whole. It, it was crazy, and we finally were able to get Airbnb, and I felt very lucky that we were able to get, like, a... It was crazy. We got this Airbnb, and they still had power, and a certain part of Portland still had power, and I was like, okay, cool. We uh, will stay here for the week, you know, and I felt very lucky that we were able to afford to do that. Like, we had the resources to do that. But then, um, what's funny is, so the, the first night... Remember, here's the thing that's crazy while this is going on. This is why it lasts so long. The storm is still happening. Right. So the snow, the ice, the rain. It's all wind, adding to it. Yeah. It's still adding. So even the workers can't get out to like repair anything. Yeah. It's, just, it's that bad. And in a lot of cases, you have trees that have fallen. So that's the priority. You got to get these trees out. You have to like, you know, help people. Yep. But uh, so I, I wake up on one of the mornings and I go out to, uh, so I wake up and I go out and I'm, I'm standing in the front of this Airbnb. And this humongous branch had fallen from the tree in the front yard. I mean, we're talking a huge tree branch. Missed my car by like this much. Oh. My 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 new car. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like this much. So I was like, <laughs> okay. And then I look at the house next door and a huge tree had fallen on the house next door to us. Oh, so I was God. like, dude, this is this is gonna be our life the next week. Uh we didn't get hot water back almost two weeks. I, I was telling you this, you know, it took a long time and you know, even getting power back on, and then it was like I came to the house, so I would come to the house multiple times. Like, I would brave the storm, I would drive in the snow and ice, whatever. I'd get to the house multiple times just to check on things. Yeah. And we had one tree in the backyard fall. Okay. Thankfully, it was a smaller tree, which actually kind of surprised me. And when I say small, I'm only saying, like, a two-story tree. Sure. So <laughs> a big yeah. tree fell in our backyard, but didn't anything. We had another tree, dude. It was crazy. Like, have you ever seen that movie, The Revenant? Yeah. Okay, so there's that thing that they talk about, like, you know, you don't look at the tops of the trees. You look at the, at the base, at the root. Yeah. That's how you know if a tree is going to fall or not. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is very real. So, <laughs> you know, I, would, I was walking around my house and looking at all the trees. We have a lot of trees around here. And I'm looking at the ground. And, you know, I'm like, okay, we're cool, cool. The one tree that fell, it was very obvious. You could see, you know, the, the ground and everything. But I go to this one tree, this huge tree. And it is like... There is a crack in the ice going around the tree, but it's just oh. a crack. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's not, a, it isn't like, but, uh, you know, it was a very thin crack going around it. And I just kept an eye on that. And at one point, I came here and I was looking at it and the crack had like moved. Mm. So, like, the ground was moving. And we got that tree taken out. Like, it took, but that was the thing. Calling somebody like, we need to take these trees out. They're going to fall was like, get like, in line. Yeah, we're taking out all these trees. There's, there's yeah, already, it's insane. It's insane. Yeah. And, and but there's trees that have fallen too. They have to take chainsaws out. I mean, we're like, dude, I'll show you some pictures later. It was yeah. it was bonkers. It was insane. But so I come to the house at one point and I realize that when our water heater broke, it uh, the water was still on. So when it broke, it actually was having water gushing out of it like a waterfall oh. going into our crawl space. It was this whole oh. crazy thing. And so I was able to like turn the water off and stop before anything bad happened. And we had stuff in the house that can take care of it. But then I realized there was water damage in our, well, downstairs in our garage. There was water going into the garage. And I'm like, okay, what could it possibly be destroying at this point? What is getting damaged? And I'm like, okay, well, it's only the front of the garage. And thankfully, there wasn't that much damage. There definitely was some damage. There was stuff that, you know. But it was, like, thankfully stuff that, um, like, nerdy stuff. I, I have a... Like, I'll tell you one of the nerdy things that I think got damaged was a um, HasLab Sentinel. Oh no! That I, had, I had to get out of the box yet. Which okay. Is fine because it's, it's It'll be out of the box yet. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you're not going to reset. Once it, uh, that's in, that's in the set to take out of the box, but that had been something that got damaged. So it's not the end of the world, but it's like again, that's like nothing. it's like oh no, the Haslab and Sentinel. Like it wasn't like yeah, exactly. That's what I was like. Or, yeah. Okay. And actually, what was good though is because there was boxes lining that part of the garage. Whatever was in those boxes, that's what absorbed the water, so it didn't go deeper in. Mm-hmm. And it was like. It was definitely surreal to go into the garage and I was going to be walking in puddles. Oh, like, yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. I was right. I knew it was happening. I could tell. Um, but again, so during all that, I basically didn't work. Yeah. And I tried. I did a little bit here and there. I basically was like triage. It was like, okay, what has to go out the door right now? What scripts have to be written right now? What can I like, you know, uh, what is just making sure these trains keep running? Mm-hmm. But that meant that once I got back, and that's what it was. Dude, time was passing so fast yeah it was like 
January was a very long month, but also went by really quick because I would text you and I'm like, yeah, we'll talk this week. And all of a totally. sudden, a week would pass. Yep. And I'd be like, holy shit, what happened? Yeah. And I'm like, dude, we're going we're gonna to talk this Wednesday. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh my God. I mean, you know, it was, just, it was, it was a crazy time. But as I, I said to you before we started, I was like, I was still watching the show and stuff. And, and I hope people that are watching, you also watched um, Sal's uh, Comic Detective short which I, I i really really loved i i uh, i was telling sal before that like i actually watched that and the moment sal took the little piece up i knew exactly what it was yes yeah. you were like oh <laughs> and i was here. just it was so fun watching you like go i also know what this is and i was like mm-hmm. yeah he does and then we showed <laughs> it so i texted you immediately i was like dude, yeah i it. have it. it was so great i remember we shot it i put it out and, uh, and I got a text. It was like, dude, that was the spawn figure. I'm like, yeah, I knew you. Yes, knew. <laughs> dude. I knew. I knew. I was so proud of you. I was like, yes, this is my guy. He freaking knew too. It was awesome. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. But yeah, dude, it was a, it was a crazy, it was a crazy month. And, and, you know, like, as I was saying before, like I work on, um, a lot of books. Yeah. So, uh, it definitely like, you know, it, it created a bottleneck at, in in January for me a little bit. But, you know, I mean, I'm also really lucky at stuff that I really enjoy working on, you know. And, and it, it was it was funny because, like, you know, when, when Duke came out, I was really happy at the response to it. Yes. Uh, and I was I was glad people really liked it because we put a lot of we put a lot of work into those books. You know, we really put a lot of thought into, you know, making it feel you know, having, having that level of escapism that we totally. were going for and like fun, you know, I, I was thinking about this this morning about how like, you know, I don't know, I, I just want to make sure the books we're doing are things that people enjoy. And so we put a lot of work and we're really thoughtful about, you know, what we're doing and putting forth with these books. I really try that with all the books I work on. And so when Duke came out and people liked it, I was like, great, I feel like this is cool. And then I was like, but what is going to happen when Cobra Commander comes out? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I've been saying all year long, I'm like, listen, this book is weird. Yeah. <laughs> it, oh, it was weird. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's not what everyone's going to expect, you know, and it's like, it's a little bit of horror. It's a little weird. It's, it's different. And, you know, I think Duke is very, uh, there's PG with a hit of PG-13, whereas in Cobra Commander, it's very PG-13, which mm-hmm. is also like the world that I like to live in. I like to live in that, like, that questionable, like, should this be R? Eh, I think it's okay. I think yeah, a good little Temple of Doom for you. Yeah, exactly. Yes, dude, Temple of Doom. I think about Temple of Doom a lot. I feel like that is, you know, the, the, the kind of where I like to, to live at in terms of, of my work. I mean, sometimes yeah. I don't mind getting into the R stuff a bit, and I think totally. the projects I'm working on will definitely be pushing the boundaries a little bit when it comes to that. It will surprise people, but... Well, there's Dark Ride as well. That's very R. Yeah, Dark Ride. Yeah, but you know the difference with Dark Ride? Because Dark Ride definitely lives in the PG thirteen land as well, but and there's cussing in Dark Ride, but we never have nudity. No, so but there is there, there is some violence, some some severe but fun, gory, like kind of a uh, schlocky violence, which I think is also yeah. Cool. I try to get like oh, I love dark, I, I love dark humor, you know. So in Dark Ride, there's that scene in the last issue. Spoilers, people have read it, but there's a scene where like somebody's on the ride and they get off the ride, but before they get on, I made a point to be like, keep your hands and feet in the ride because something that's always in all rides. Mm-hmm. Moment he gets off the ride, the ride cuts off his arms and feet. <laughs> <laughs> so I try yeah. to put that stuff in there. But, you know, when Cobra Craner came out, I, I saw the response to it and I was really happy. You know, I was glad that people liked it and that, that you know, it seemed like stores were selling them. And, and that was a really a key piece, you know, it's oh, yeah. like getting people in the stores, getting them excited about comic books. And so it was just awesome to see people really, you know, heading in that direction. I was really uh I don't know, man. It was good. So, like, those two projects have been uh, really rewarding. Especially when all that was going on, because Cobra Commander came out. During all that. came out during all that. Yeah, yeah. we were still living in the Airbnb uh, and, you know, trying to get work done. And also, you know, like, my kids, there was no school, oh, you know, man. like, it's just it's just chaos. Uh, you know, obviously, it's like a, a routine break, you know, we're all creatures of habit. You know, I'm, I'm a nerd, and nerds are like the kings and creatures of habit. It's mm-hmm. part of what has kept our industry alive for so long. Is like <laughs> we all agree we're all doing this this week, right? We're all going to buy comic books this week. We've all agreed. Yeah. This, is, this is the plan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, it's been it's been really real, those two projects, and then obviously building out the the other stuff with DC, like working on Superman and, and action at the same time, doing House of Brainiac, which. Dude, I, I showed you some of Rafa's stuff. I gotta show yeah. you more. Yeah, the stuff that Rafa's doing is is uh it is it is bonkers. 
Like he is just bringing it. There's stuff in that that I think will be really, really fun. You know, I want it to be, I don't know, with, with that of with that crossover between Superman and action, like it pays off a lot of stuff we set up from the beginning, but I really want to make sure that it's just, you know, fun. Yeah. Just a big old fun space adventure. I don't normally do stuff in space anymore because I, I always, I don't know. Well, well, go on. I think you're going to say something. I will talk about what I've been reading recently. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that's a good Iconically. transition because we uh, yeah. I was like, yeah, I, I, I go, I do love a good space adventure. Um, but it's... Well, what do you think is the best space adventure though? Oh man. Well, I mean, I think I think Star Wars, but, uh, but... oh well, yeah, that's a whole other. But that's that's a, that's a whole other echelon of stuff. I was thinking about Star Wars a, a bunch this morning because of. Um... You know, I was thinking about one of the things I think really worked about uh, Star Wars. Actually, okay, so this this is a, this is this is interesting, right? So yeah, I was thinking about Star Wars this morning, and I was like, you know, I think one of the things that really worked about Star Wars was it it was counter programming mm. because in the seventies, seventies is, is a heavy time as a as a heavy ten years, but also all the movies are pretty heavy too. You know, yeah, there there are a lot of amazing movies. Like some of my favorite movies of all time are in that window. You know, you get Taxi Driver and Taxi Driver, you have Godfather, you know, Apocalypse Now, you have the conversation. Obviously, I liked uh, Coppola a lot, but you know, it's like you have a very heavy moment in time, and it's funny because a lot of those movies were made by the same group of dudes, right? You know, it's, yes, it's the Palma, it's Scorsese, it's uh, Coppola, but then you had our guys George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so you have this era that is very heavy, right? And even Jaws, which was a blockbuster, is still very heavy. It is way, heavy. Yeah. You know? And so you have this heavy era, right? We're still we're still dealing with the Vietnam War after effects. You have all of this stuff that's going on in the world in that time period. And then all of a sudden, here's Star Wars. Yeah. And it's like, it's big. It's fun. It's this huge space opera. Uh, very much about escapism, but also very relatable, right? There's a lot of relatable things going on in it. But also it was using a lot of familiar pieces, right? Because mm-hmm. George was basically like a love letter to old pulps that he liked, which is the same thing with Indiana Jones, but it's like... Yeah. And I, I love that story. It's in that Steven Spielberg documentary where all those guys watched Star Wars for the first time. Like George showed it to everybody. Yeah. And it was just quiet and they all go to dinner and no one's saying anything. And then De Palma's just like what the fuck was that? <laughs> and Scorsese and De Palma and Coppola are like, I don't know, George. Like, <laughs> what are you making here? And De Palma was like, you got to give me some contact, which I'm, I'm sure you know this, right? De Palma was the one that told him you have to do the scroll at the beginning. He's like, you got you to gotta explain stuff at the beginning. You gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got yeah. to give him some kind of footing. Yeah. Yeah, you got to give me a bit more, um, which was also an older thing to do anyway. So he's like, let's, if you're doing it, do it. Yeah. But then Steve Spielberg was one that was like, I don't know, I, I I think you got something here. Mm-hmm. And it's funny when you take a step back from that, you'd be like, oh, the two dudes who got it are the ones who probably made more money, like made all the big blockbusters after that. It's uh-huh. like, no offense with other guys. Like, I, I really like all those guys' movies. Yeah. But it is, it's two different things. But Star Wars was counter programming in that yes. moment. And I think that's something you see sometimes. I think that's part of what also with like the Energon Universe is working. But you and I, before we were talking about, we were talking about Annihilation. Yes. And Annihilation is really fast. And also, by the way, really quickly, when we talk about Annihilation, we're talking about the, the first Annihilation. Book. We're talking about the comic books, not the movie. Oh, no. Yeah, that's a that's a good movie. But also, ugh. it's uh, a good not... movie. But also, well, here's the funny thing. So one time out, we were at a summit and uh, we're at this summit and we're talking about Justice League and Death Metal. Like we're all planning stuff. And I'm sitting there and I like missed a beat or something. I, think I was taking notes on something. And then all of a sudden, James and Scott were like, do you think this is too much like Annihilation? <laughs> and I was like, and I hadn't seen Annihilation. I hadn't seen right. the movie. It, I think it had just come out maybe a year before, but it was in that window where it was still in people's heads. Mm-hmm. And when they were like, do you think this is too much like Annihilation? I was thinking about Marvel's Annihilation. Sure. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there like, and we're yeah. having this back and forth about Annihilation. And I think at some point I was like, well, you know, Nova and all this stuff. And they're like, what? what are you talking about? I'm like, what are you talking about? Uh, but like, yeah, I, yeah, I started reading Annihilation recently, but it's funny because Annihilation was almost counter-programming to Civil War. Big time. Oh no, that was like, it was a, it was a, it was like, we're going to take the Marvel Universe and we're going to blow it up using Civil War, Cap vs. Iron Man, all this crap. And it's like, okay, well, so you're not using any of the pieces from space. Like nothing from space is being used. Mm-hmm. Not, Thor isn't even on the table. So we can't even like bring any cosmic elements to Civil War. It's the most like grounded street level 
bombastic Marvel event you've ever seen. And then you've got Annihilation, which is just the complete opposite of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Civil War is like, I mean, that's like, I think Malar said this, right? That's the highest selling yeah. collection or whatever, right? Like, I mean, me. Civil War is like, it, it set the tone for so much of Marvel after. I mean, it's a very It changed Marvel event. forever. Uh, irrever- yeah, and it's, I think it's, I, I might be wrong. Someone else could tell me this, but I, I believe it's the highest selling event, right? Like, for Marvel, Marvel specifically, right? Like, it has to be. But that one, it set the tone for so much after that. But yeah, that's funny. I didn't think about that. There was nothing really in it that had all those characters. Like, I'm going to show up. And I was one of those people that thought, uh, I was one of those people that was like, you know how Civil War is going to end? Annihilus is going to show up. Like, they're going to lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you? That did not happen. <laughs> did you read the What If Annihilation book? I know that exists. I've never read it. Because I that is how that ends. I know, I know that. No, no, I know that. I know that. I, I'm, I'm aware of it. I've never read it. It's um, such a great moment. It's, uh, God, who made that? Was that David Hine? But uh, in any case, that it's so great because, you know, Nova's showing up being like, I'm sorry, what are you complaining about right now? Yeah, I know, really. They're like, what's happening? We got, do you know, like, whole plans have died, right? Like, <laughs> He's like, shut up. up here. I need you guys to happen. assemble right now. <laughs> yeah, we got to go. Um, it, so it's great. funny reading that stuff because you know Nova becomes kind of like like Superman in that story because he yeah. gets all all the power and stuff. He gets the the Nova Core power and yeah. it also reading that rereading it it really it, rereading it I was like man Keith Giffen dude oh. this dude I underrated I, I it's weird it's like some people would be like no 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 he he we all know we all know he was great but I still feel like he wasn't appreciated as much how great he was right? right like when you go back and look at all the work that guy did like he just had all these hits and yeah. you know i think it's funny because you know when people think of keith Giffen, a lot of times they think of like the laughing you know they think of booster gold and and uh blue beetle they think of yeah. the brahaha stuff right and it's like don't get me wrong that stuff's in there but there's also a lot of like really deep stuff like annihilation, you know, like, I mean, that dude had a, a way with words, like his dialogue is so strong. His character stuff is so good. And, you know, obviously I love, I love Lobo, you know, I'm a oh, big sure. fan. I mean, you can tell there's like, I have a Lobo shelf right there. I see and, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have the statue and I have a bunch of toys up there. And I actually, I got the Lobo that's on that gigantic motorcycle in McFarlane release. Yes. Yes. Dude, that thing is huge. I opened it and I'm like, where am I? Where am I putting <laughs> <laughs> it's it's over here. It's on the other side. Nice. And I like I see it sometimes, and I'm like, it can't fit up there. I have no idea where I'm going to put this gigantic Lobo motorcycle. Yeah. Um, but it still it looks super super rad. It is one of the coolest toys I've seen McFarlane produce. But yeah, keep giving man. He just had it. Like he was he was always so good. Like you know, and uh, but yeah, rereading Annihilation. It it's really a fun event. It is dark. It is bleak. Like they're going to, there is a constant feeling of we are going to lose. Right. In that event. But it's still, it's just so fun, dude. I, I think that's one of the better, like, I don't know. I, I'm not as caught up on some of the space stuff. I liked when Bendis was doing Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like, I think that's the last, like, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Is that the last, like, really big? Because I had War of Kings, and, and that, that, like, I, I consider that all Annihilation anyway. Like, the, yeah, it, it is all part of that same. Like, right? I, I want to call it trilogy, but yeah, because I read, I read Conquest as well, and I like yeah. Conquest. Conquest was cool because I mean, both times I felt like a dummy that I hadn't realized who the bad guys were. Both times, right, right. Like the first time when it was a reveal, because I love Annihilus. <laughs> yeah, like, he's a character I really like, and then when it was revealed, it was Annihilus. I don't know how I wasn't paying attention. I think I think we were so paying attention to Civil War so much. Yes. That when Annihilation was coming out, I wasn't reading solicits or anything, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, you know? Yeah. Um, but you get the last page and you're like, oh, it's Annihilus, duh. Like, yep. of course it is. And then we had the Conquest, uh, which got I remember Conquest, you know, probably like 15 years at, at, at least. I'll, I'll probably yeah. reread it. Um, but the fact that it was the, fa- it was the Phalanx and then it was revealed that it was Ultron, like running the Phalanx, I was I like, I love it. Oh. This is also cool. Yeah, agreed. No, it's it, it was cool, but it made sense. I also just to uh, to your point about uh, Giffen's dialogue and how like it was it was um util he it works. It's fun. There's cool lines, but mm-hmm. he doesn't he doesn't crowd the page. You know, he's it's no. very economical. Just yeah, yeah. But uh, this is a good this is a good comic book writer. It's a good comic book writer. I, mean, I remember yeah, when, that was, when that was building. You know, they did such a good job of building up like Drax is gonna kill 
Thanos, Thanos. And that cover. Yeah, there's that cover where he's standing there in front of Thanos. He has the swords behind eyes behind his back. Oh yeah. I mean, that book had some real, real hype to it. You know, you and I were texting about this. I'm sure. I wonder if you thought about this more since we were texting about it. Um, yeah. Because that that event has some really cool moments in it. But I was I was thinking about this, and I, so I'm I'm super curious if you thought about this more since we texted about it at all. Mm-hmm. You know, what do you think are like the peak coolest moments in comics that people have not been able to recapture? Right. So, like for me, the one I texted you was you know, black suit Spider-Man. Like there's something about that moment that is just like the secret wars. Number eight, the first yeah. appearance him, there comes a costume, that image of Spider-Man, like yep. against the Marvel universe in this suit that just is a mic drop. Yeah. And the thing is it's funny about that moment is it's like, people keep trying to repeat it. I know I have like, we've all. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> You're all trying to be like, what is that moment? You see a new, I would be curious about this. If people in the comments, like what they think, right? Because it's like, what are moments? Because I'm trying to think, like, who else has had a costume redesign? Right. I mean, has had that kind of impact. Is is the death of Superman up there? I think you know, just like the the the, the well, image the of Super- well, just uh, well, the four, yeah. But like, I just mean just the image of the cape against the the post. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a that's a really really. But is that like an iconic image as opposed to a? Dope, like the coolest moment but that's it i don't know if i would call that cool that's iconic it's kind of sad <laughs> like hell yeah yeah because it wasn't know? like the breaking of batman like that's that's a sad moment it's not like yeah what is um what is that is it poochie that's the saying right poochie poochie right but here's the thing is that the black suit is kind of a poochie moment that works right? I, I mean like i don't i i i never considered the black costume a gimmick but i wasn't reading when it was ca- happening you know what i mean like that is interesting yeah we're, we're too young to be jaded to be like, in that moment to be yeah no one was like oh another costume Pfft. like no we didn't read like the jim shooter letters page when it was read you know when we were like saw it before it actually was revealed like we 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 inherited it as a like as a given. Well, like, hey, we should get you know what you get. What you want to get is Secret Wars number eight. That's the first appearance of your favorite alternate Spider-Man. Dude, I remember that was a big deal. Yeah, I remember getting a copy of it. I oh, had to get a copy. I got a copy too. It's <laughs> how many do you have? You have a few, right? I have at least two. One is signed by everyone. It's Shooter, BD, right. Zek, everybody. Um, I don't know where my copy is. I think I told you that. I think I might have sold mine, and I regret it. When I, when I sold my collection, there's a couple things I wish I had kept. I know that I've I kept a couple key things here and there, and I bought totally. some back, but that's one that, like, it's funny now because I, I know when I bought it, I probably bought it for, like, $10, and I would not find it for $10 now. I know I got it for, like, between 5 and 8 bucks. Like, I oh, know it was – because that was the limit of how much money I could spend on comics when I was, like, getting back issues and stuff. Like, because I remember – one of um one of the biggest like my mom whinging about giving me extra money was I had to get the issue where Robin dies oh. in a death in the family and yeah. she it was and it was twelve dollars yeah so I had that but that uh, moment where you're like I told you the story about uh about um Infinity Gauntlet right like Infinity yeah. Gauntlet number one where I was like. I was like I remember I remember going in the comics as a little kid I I couldn't have my hands on the glass. Yeah. looking at this comic and it was ten dollars and i remember being like someday i will have ten dollars <laughs> yeah someday i will have ten dollars like and i will buy this comic book uh i think the most money i ever spent as a kid on a comic book mm-hmm. um there's there's two that i can think of right off right off the bat um one was uh uncanny 266 so you know first sure. appearance of gambit right so yeah. I, I remember that i remember seeing it like at a at a convention i don't remember how much it was my brain tells me it was 60 bucks but i feel like that feels excessive it might have been like 30 that you know right. it might have been somewhere in that window however however the most i don't remember the number now i'm blanking on the number but the most money as a kid as right. a kid because I've, I've bought stuff you know like i have the first appearance of the punisher and stuff like that nice. i bought those later for for more but as a kid going to my parents and begging to buy a comic book yeah was the first appearance of the spider clone so that cover with um, oh jackal Rick and the two of them swinging at each other yeah. yeah that one was the one i remember being at a convention and being like 
mom, like you have to buy me this. You don't need to see my GI Joe toys. Uh, <laughs> this whole Dude. thing is just GI Joe toys over here. <laughs> well, yeah, you've uh, you've you've expanded your collection considerably. Yeah, you can since... see a little. I can see like it's starting to you know. Oh yeah, but, uh... <laughs> yeah, and dude, uh, that I have. I don't. I don't think I have that issue, but I have the what if comic that mm-hmm. posed the question if the spider clone had lived, which I got for a quarter during the clone saga. Oh man. Well, for a quarter. Yeah. I love, you know, it's funny. Like, you know, every once in a while, I, I feel like we've lost the love of like the dollar bins, you know? Yeah. And I love the, the dollar bins. I, I, I yeah. judge a comic book store, whether they have them or not. Like if the comic book oh, store has a dollar bin. Yeah. Like I, 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 it gets an extra bump for me if they have dollar bins or if they have like discount trades. Like if it's just a comic book store, here's what the 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 companies have deemed uh, for sale. I'm like that is something the- I always find right? fascinating is if you're a comic book store that only prioritizes what came out that week. Yeah, you know, I mean that's why I think some really great comic book stores they have like book clubs and they they have a really robust trade cl- you know trade section yes. and you know those are things to look for and. Yeah. You know, but also all shops should be built for what their their audience is for that moment, right? Like exactly. their different shops are built for different things. But yeah, dollar bins, man. Like I built so much of my stuff. I was when I was a kid. It is funny to have like I have a room full of comic books now, but when I was a kid, it's like the stacks I would have. You know, before I had a before I had a short box. I mean, I had a. It's funny. I I, I grew up with a short box because it always had my parents' comics in it, right? Mm-hmm. So there was always the older stuff. But I have this memory of um i had this i had this like s- small walk-in closet so not even a real i wouldn't yeah. even call it in closet right it's just like it was just a, a closet it was deep so, enough to hold clothes on a rack yes yeah. but i wouldn't put clothes in there no. so what i did was is that i made it like my comic book room mm-hmm. and so i had a, a chair I basically it was weird because it had these two shelves that were built into it right that were like perfect level to be desks yeah and so i had one where i had like my notepads and like that's where i would make put all my ideas and i would draw and stuff and then you know whenever they would release like um poster books like wizard would do it or marvel would do it you know so like when there were all those jim lee posters from x-men number one you know oh yeah you uh, yank those out which i wish i still had some of those yeah they were so cool uh i put those up on the wall but then behind me on that shelf that's where my comic books Mm. and I would have, like, three stacks of comics, mm. and it was Marvel, DC, and everything else, which I feel like this is, sadly, how we all still do it to this day. 100%. Anyway. Yeah. So yep. I was, like, Marvel, DC, everything else, and I would watch to see which piles were growing. Oh, that's funny. To see, yeah. I would always be like, no, no, Marvel's winning this month. Like, I would be, like, <laughs> you know, it was before I started having, like, uh, you know, I... Um, a long box or a short box unless that was mine you yeah, know yeah. and uh you know having much more and like now i have this room where there's so much stuff in here but actually i think even with this room when i'm gonna probably do a purge this this summer and do like a curating of it just to kind of be like because you can't tell but there are stacks of comics everywhere in this room. <laughs> i mean there are like over here i have like the dc section so it is just like I mean, I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, six stacks of, of trays that are probably about yay, you know. Oh, like four feet oh. high? Yeah. Yeah, over oh here. And I have Marvel over here, and then I have, you know, everything else over here. Right. <laughs> and then I have the two read pile. Oh, and no. The read pile is, is a whole problem. Yes. You know, I, I need to take a picture of the two read pile, or at least like um, what I have accumulated in this room since I moved into this room pile. Right, right, right. Like, you know, I read a couple things. Like, I always read Brew Baker stuff. So whenever Brew Baker puts a book out, I read it like immediately, and then it gets put on the Brew Baker shelf. He has his own shelf. That's nice. Uh, I'm like, Whoop. you know, so that's <laughs> not in the two read pile anymore. But I have a huge uh, two read pile over here uh, of books that I have to like. Yeah, I gotta read them. <laughs> yeah, before I even knew about long boxes and short boxes, like I, I assumed that long boxes when I was exposed to them as a kid, they were fixtures in the comic book store. So I assumed that was like for merchandise. Oh, yeah. So I, did, I didn't. I, I was like, well, I don't know what we do. Like we, you know, co- like uh, civilians, but uh, the comic book retailer has the, the the boxes. So I remember I had to order a box from Marvel. I had a red. Oh man. Like I had a red short, the equivalent of a short box, but it was just a cardboard box with Marvel characters on them. 
in black and white, but on a red, a red colored box. I still have the box in my shed in my house, but like it's a, uh, and it fit the equivalent of a short box, but it, it was set up like a cardboard box where it had like a built in, like, like foldable lid. Cause I was mm-hmm. like, mom, I need like a box for these comic books. I have too many comic books. And she adorably assumed that I would need like the short box. I had probably at least three long boxes worth of books that I needed to put into boxes. So I prioritized the books that needed that. I was like, well, these need to be protected. So they'll go into the the box I have that has Marvel characters on it. What made you start thinking you had to protect them? Uh, you, I'm, you oh, saw it? oh no. I, well, I mean, first of all, like just being surrounded by them, like I'd see them on the shelf and I'd take them and I'd like, as a kid, you know, like I bought comics from a comic book store. Like there was one forgivably in my town, but also I would get them off the rack at like a seven 11 down the shore oh, and yeah. stuff. And I would just have them, you know, I just roll them and stick them in my pocket and yep. they, you know, I'd read them. I remember reading one of the return of Superman, like the issue where Superman comes back. Yeah. 500, yeah. 500. No, 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 no. The one where the, he's Green Lantern's arms in a sling. They're fighting Mongol. Oh, like, oh, like, later. Yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. Do, I think. Or when he, yeah. when he flies. It's like yeah, when he, when, when he gets blasted by Eradicator and then like the powers from Eradicator. Or when he gets blasted by Cyborg Superman who hits Eradicator whose powers imprint onto Cal's body. I think that's A2. Well, there's the one where he flies off and... Yeah, that's the one at the end. Boy, like, Through Boy is like, that's, that's Superman. Superman. Yeah. I think that's yeah. A2. Yeah. yeah. I think that's so I'm reading, I, I vividly remember reading Superman 82 in a in a raft in the lake that we belong to, just in the middle of the water. Like, I did not have any respect for these books, but uh, my that's mom... That's really funny. I, right? I was sorry about that, but go on. Yeah, this oh, is great. Really you're, well, like, you're like, I'll I'm just throw like, these in the water. <laughs> Yeah, no, my f- well, like I, I was like, well, I don't want him to get wet, but like I'll still, but I'm still gonna read him ever- anywhere I want. Uh, my my spectacular Spider-Man, like my first comic book, I have it in a in a bag and board, but like the cover is long since separated from the pages, and like it's it has staples that I put into the book to keep oh, it together. Man. Like yeah. it is that like trashed. Um, but uh, I, I remember my mom's friend had a son who was older than me who was mixed up in a lot of messed up stuff, but he also was an aspiring artist. He had a very, he was clearly trying to draw like McFarlane, everything, every time he drew Mm Spider-Man. And I remember as a kid, he drew that he was emulating the image from Spider-Man one from McFarlane, where he's putting Mm -hmm. the costume on and he's putting the, and he's like, he's like grimacing and putting the mask on. And he drew that. I remember going like, why is he having such a hard time putting that mask on? Yeah, yeah. And he was like, crazy. "Shut up! It's cool looking." Like that was, but he had. Well, like, that's a that's a big part of that era of comics. Yeah, and he. <laughs> and but he wrong, was, I was there too. I was like, "This is dope. I love all this stuff." Oh so. no, I, I I still like. I have my wife was sweet enough to get me. Let's see if I can lift it with one hand. Oh, the Todd McFarlane. Oh yeah, Spider-Man. I have it too. <laughs> yeah, I have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just spent I like my birthday just looking at it and just enjoying it and being like, I've, it's, I, I've it's always so wanted cool. to see it this close up. You know, there is one that they did. There was an artist edition that's been out for a while. I want to get at some point, but it is the one that's just the Marvel covers. Oh yeah, yeah. Somebody else, a friend of mine, has it, and uh, you know, you know, Dennis Culver he did uh, Doom Patrol. Yeah, yeah, he has it. Um, and nice. we were talking about it, and that's when I wish I had. I do have the Jim Lee like really big one. Oh, that one. I've it seen that one. I've almost bought it that. a couple times. Yeah, I got that. It was uh, it was a Christmas gift. That nice. was one that um, that I got. And uh, 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 Ben Abernathy, he actually got me for my birthday. He got me the Walt Simonson Fantastic Four one. Cool. It's over here too. That one is super cool. Um, but uh, yeah, go on. Yeah. So you oh, were, but he, so he was the... like, I have to protect these. these are yeah, my he was like, well, he, he was the guy who was like these comics aren't in board or you need to have boards in these bags. Like you need to get bags. Like first I was like, Oh, Dude, I need bags. Not being, that's a weird thing. That was like, there was a moment in time where it was like, you don't need the board. Just put the bag. And you're like, yes, you well, know, that was, was like, a really weird thing. Yeah. yeah so, I, and listen, every garage sale you go to every thrift store you go to that has comic books, uh, guaranteed. They don't have bag. They don't have boards in them. Yeah. They're just, yep. they're just bagged floppies that are just melting into each other. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. With a, with a $20 price tag for no good reason. Oh, I know. Well, I mean, even there was a moment there where I was doing uh, double bagging. So I would do like, it depends on the bag you do, but you do like, you know, if, if you have like a long run of something. Yeah. And you're like, this is mine. It would make sense to like double bag it where you'd be like, you know, you would have uh, issue one and then the board and then issue two behind it. Oh, okay. 
Right. So it's still the same thing. I that would also do that. saves you money because like I didn't have I was like, I barely have money for comics. I gotta buy bags yeah. now. And I gotta oh, buy I know. Boards. That's the trick. If you had there were comic stores that were like, you know, on Wednesday only or whatever, boards and bags were free, and you're just like, Hell yeah. But we would always have them at the counter. I uh, when I sold my collection, that was one of the tricks was like I had a lot of stuff that were unbagged Double. but were like good quality. Yeah. Right. So it was like, okay, I have to bag all this stuff. And I'm like, oh man, I gotta buy all this stuff. But that's when I was like, wait, double bagging everything. And then I went back through my collection and I'm like, okay, so if I had this run of something, I'm taking out the taking second all out. Yeah. There was a whole adventure trying to like redo the whole thing. But <laughs> yeah. Uh uh well go on. Okay. So you, you oh. he, he was like, You must have bags. He's like, You have to have bags and boards. What are you, some kind of crazy savage? Like it was uh <laughs> yeah, it was it. So he, but his like rabid fandom insisted, like it, it instilled this like, you know, this kind of fear in me that I was like, oh, I'm a bad comic book collector if I don't protect them in these bags or boxes. And uh, so eventually, I was like, and then I remember, um, one of my my retailer must have said something like, uh, do you want a box? Like I think you offered it like, oh, you want a box? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I love a box. He's like, yeah, here you go, uh, six dollars. But like, here's your box, like. <sighs> That, that makes me wonder if the first time I ever got, if I ever got a box was because something like that. Like, I'm trying to remember now. I, I remember that when I was, the, the, the remember I remember very clearly suddenly becoming precious about my comics. Because I would do the same thing. You know, I was, I was a, a subscription guy. So they're coming in the mail ruined, you know. So it's like, yeah, you're already, you know, having a detachment from it. I remember my friends and I, we rode our bikes to the comic store. We all bought comics. And... um I bought a couple books about like maybe three or four comics. There was one I was really excited about. And we, we were like, you know, we would eat pizza hut, whatever. And then with um, their comics. And yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is all of us grew up in, I grew up in California. So everybody had a pool, you know? Oh yeah. And so we're like, we're all going to go back to this one guy's house and we're going to go swimming and, you know, we're swimming, whatever. And I'm like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to read this comic book. And so I'm in like a, 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 a pool chair, you know, whatever the lounge chairs, whatever. Yeah. And I remember reading the comic and then someone splashed at me and the water got on the comic. And that was the moment where my, my true nerd came, came out <laughs> of like, Hey guys, <laughs> quit having fun, water on my youthful fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to <laughs> like, read. Yeah. And I remember being like, Hey, <clears throat> and I remember I have this clear memory. And then one of my friends with the pool, like it was like, there were three people in the pool and two of the guys were like, ha ha ha. And then one guy was like, no, no, no like, maybe we shouldn't splash him because I think they could tell I was just like, he's getting upset. Yeah. 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 I was definitely having a like, George, you don't want George to get upset. Right. <laughs> George getting upset. Yeah. yeah. I had, I definitely had like a, a, a moment of that. I, I remember it very clearly being like, ah. but it was Batman predator. Oh, <laughs> that was oh, oh. it was Batman predator. And I remember I very clearly was just like, mm, no, you are not getting Batman predator wet. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think that was the, that was the moment. And then it was weird. I had like, ups because the cost of buying bags and boards. So I had like ups and downs with it where it was like, you bag and board everything. Uh, you know, and it's funny where you see people who have like taken care of their comics in different ways, you know? And it was like, I remember, um, it's always interesting. Like I always see people, you know, who had been bagging and boarding the comics like from day one. And so you mm -hmm. get these people who have these like amazing collections. I think one of the best collections I ever saw of Uncanny X-Men was this guy who had had every single issue of Uncanny X-Men. And he had been keeping care of them from like day one. Like he bought them off the stands oh, just... and he had the long box, but he also was keeping them pretty tightly compressed, which means, which will even keep them even better. Right. Yes, exactly. And uh, I remember seeing that box because he was negotiating if he, I, I was helping him uh, sell it. He was debating if he wanted to sell it. And I had a Ooh. buyer who wanted to buy it and they had like a debate on how much they were, he was going to buy this for. And dude, it was crazy. It would have been a steal at the time uh, compared to now. Yeah. But I remember like looking at those comics and it was just like so delicate because like, I'm not going to be the one yeah. to mess up. Right. And mm -hmm. just, and looking at it, but then there were people I knew who would keep their comics in like binders. Yes. You know, they I've put them those. in those. will wreck those books. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. No, they'll wreck your cards to do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, well, if you have too many cards in those because... sleeves, they move. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or like the, the, move and stuff. the, the yeah, ring breaks. They, no, that's no, you can't. You know, it, it'll mess it up and stuff. But yeah, it's funny how I've gone through like waves of being precious about it, and now I'm, I'm, 
I'm less precious about it. Like I've never been a, um, a CGC person. So it's funny with the people I know who I talk to who like know that I will buy like key issues and stuff. Like I'll still buy first appearances and I, nice. I love gimmick covers. Sure. So yeah, I know. Cover, I nice. cut especially. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. So <laughs> it's like I'll I'll get all of it. I mean, that Wolverine fifty cover is still one of the best variant covers ever made. Yes. But uh, I'll go and I'll pick up certain things. And it's funny when I talk to the people, they're just like, "Well, I got this CGC. It's it's this and this." And I'm like, "Oh, don't worry, no, about man. That. Like, I just wanted a bag of board. Like, yeah. just can I get that?" And I also I'm really weird about how I want the new stand edition sometimes. Me too. Well, what, because you want the logo. I and want the real one. Logo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I, I had the same thing with the uh, first prince of Deadpool because there's two versions of it. There's one that has the, uh, I think it's a Spider Man head in the corner, and they have the one with the barcode. And I'm like, nah, man, I want the Spider Man head. Like, yeah, I think that's the way it is. Yeah, but it's like I always want whatever that version of it is. Yeah, and the so one from the comic like shop. Yeah. yeah, it gets tricky. Yeah, that's the direct market version, right? Exactly. Yeah, so it's like it's tricky. That took me a long time to figure out what was going on with that. Me too. I would get X Men comics, and they'd be like, "This is a newsstand edition." I'm like, "What does that even mean?" I, I remember yeah. hearing that stuff. Like all the once I found out about like how the collection market worked, because I was like, yeah. "I think I got the hang of this." I buy the comic, I put it into a sleeve, I put that into a box, got it, and then they're like, "Oh, which edition is it?" And I was, and and very quickly that helped to like disillusioned me from the love of the medium for a while. Like where I was like, it was easy for me to go like, well, I'm done with this <laughs> because oh, it was got, the, the moment it gets like a little, not well, I would say a little complicated. No, but it did get, you know, it's a little complicated where they're like, Oh, yeah. where, where I could, where some, some person is like looking at my, is judging my collection or something and goes like, Oh, you don't have, you didn't know that you needed to get the news. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, I don't want to be oh, in this yeah. position ever again. I don't want to, I, I don't want to ever be judged like that again. <laughs> I, I, I wonder if I was ever like that level of, um, I don't want to say stuck up, but I'm not right. sure the word I would use. I don't know if I've ever been that level of like, oh, really? Like mm. uh, 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 about anything, um, you know, even with the even the CGC stuff, like just now I said, I don't like it, but I know the people who love it and that is really important to them. Totally. Uh, I'm not caught up on all of any of the, the CGC like controversy last month. Yeah, I just read about I, it. I was like, oh, I saw snippets of it, you know, because I follow a, a couple people who are, you know, in that world and stuff. And so I saw them like talking about it. And I mm -hmm. was like, I don't understand any of this, but it looks uh, not great. <laughs> So, it looks like something that know. was that I always felt was inevitable, and I was like, I don't, I, I didn't like it from the jump. Like, I, and then I found, and then oh, I was like, seeing or just yeah, I, I never, I never liked it. I, I, it, when I go look at like key issues, like the mm -hmm. the 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 days of leafing through a long box at a comic book store, yeah. whether it's a dollar bin or just the regular bins and finding a key issue they're gone those days are over unless you have a comic shop that is like 45 years old and the guy who's in it is 85 years old and he doesn't he does he doesn't have an internet connection but I otherwise no it, like, it depends on the stores i mean there are stores i mean i watch i get uh i watch a lot of stores i follow a lot of stores on instagram yeah like, i love when they're just like we just bought a collection and oh here's all the stuff we just found and here it is and i'm like I get jealous sometimes because, you know, some of the stores that do that, none of them are nearby me. There's actually yeah. a store near, there's a couple stores nearby me that do have a lot of key stuff. And so I've gone in there and I've picked up stuff from them. But it's like, when I see that sometimes, and it's a lot of like, it's funny because we're in this weird moment where there was such a bashing of the 90s. Yeah. Right? Like such a bashing of the 90s as it was happening and then immediately following. And people were just like, Make fun of 90s comics. Worst decade of the comic industry. Yeah, exactly. But now that is like the hot thing when it comes to original art and when it comes to uh, like key First stuff. And buy, yeah. Which is so weird because you're like some of the stuff, there's a lot of it. But oh, yeah. it's because it's like, I think in some ways it's disappeared, you mm -hmm. know? Right? Well, it's like, but, how is it that a comic that they made like a million copies of is now kind of hard to find. Oh, I know. It, it's uh, one of my, my, my original comic, my first comic book retailer, he retired after he found out he could make exactly as much money selling online as in the store. He was like, well, then I don't have to deal with the customers. Goodbye forever. And he disappeared. Oh, it was, <laughs> <laughs> he was the guy who was like, really funny. Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah he, he ran, it was, uh, I could, I don't mind mentioning the store cause it never, it doesn't exist anymore. Pegasus enterprises. But, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, the dude who ran Pegasus, uh, he he had nothing but disdain for the for the for the customer. Mm -hmm. And as a kid going into the store, like he he was always like, "You sure you want to be here? Like, you sure you want to do this?" <laughs> He's like, "Cause you want you see all the people around you, right? Like you don't want to work, you don't want to be like them." Like uh, there was a dude oh, who came man. in. There was a dude who came in the store, 
breaks yeah. my heart. I know it was so mean. My mom hated this guy. Like she would come in and be like, "Hello, like your name. Like my son likes your the things in the store. What does he want?" And he, you know, it was great, very combative relationship. But uh, there was a guy who came in. He was called the Man in Black. That was his name. He wore black leather. Like he had a black leather cowboy hat. He had a leather okay. jacket. He had leather pants. Like he had leather boots. He came in like a cowboy. And I remember being like, wow, that guy's really cool. How old am I? 10? And, yeah. and my cowboy dog goes, that man is not cool. You do not want to be like that man. That man lives with his mother. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just very cautioned against everything about it. So I had a very weird kind of like, it kind of informs how I, how I, act apparently in the comic industry but uh you know oh, but that yeah. was that but, uh, but yeah when it comes to oh but anyway so he i ran into him like i want to when i'm starting to do this at a comic con <laughs> and he's just he's just taking it in because he's been out of the business for 20 years and he's just like ah and he goes you think anybody wants uh you know like the poly bagged action comics return of superman mm -hmm. the white one do you yeah think anybody, white. does he think anybody wants 500 copies of that book because that's what I have. I have about 500 copies of that book somewhere in my, in my storage unit. And I'm like, probably not. But I guarantee he's got more than that. Like, I guarantee he's got, like, tons of, like, issues of Superman from the death of Superman till, you know. Well, Superman is a weird one because I think, and I think this is something as a collector as well as, like, you know, I obviously I, I love Superman as I have a Superman <laughs> right here by my head. <laughs> there is something, I've heard this before about people don't collect Superman comics. Yeah. And I've heard this before, and I'm like, that's so fascinating because, you know, I read, I, I, I've read a lot of Superman comics, particularly in the 90s. Like, I was reading all of it. Like, I don't me think too. there's, a, it, it's kind of like Flash and Batman for me, where mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know if there's ever really been a moment. I've fallen behind every once in a while, right? Like, yeah. you know, I've had moments of like, oh, I fell behind a year or whatever, you know, and, and, and my collecting habits have changed uh, now that I'm older, but Superman's one of those books I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty certain I bought Superman almost every month, except for, you know, we talked before, I think in the New 52 window, like I wasn't buying as much in that window. Yeah. Uh, um, but, you know, like I really liked when, when Rebirth started and Tomasi was doing it and Jurgens were doing it. Like I, I read I, every issue. I bought every no, issue. Really yeah. good Superman comic books. Agreed. And, but I don't, I don't think there's ever been a window where I wasn't. I mean, I have like, you know, it's funny. I have a huge Batman like section of trades. Yeah, same. And, and when I started working on Superman, I was like, I need to make sure I have a Superman section. And I actually was much larger than I thought it was going to be. Same. But Superman's funny. Like, I don't think people really collect it. And I think sometimes the reason why, and I think this is a part of why, I, I think I might have said this to you before, where it's like, when I was younger, and even a little bit as an, as an adult, it's like this too. I would collect Marvel, but read DC. Mm-hmm. Have I ever come to that before? Where it's yeah, like, I remember you making that distinction yeah. where it's like you were a, yeah, yeah. But the part of it is because, well, obviously, I think the X-Men is a big piece of this because X-Men was always introducing new characters. But yeah. I think it's part of why is because the majority of DC characters, I might be wrong on this, but I think the majority of DC characters are older. Yes. And there are, there are less big first appearances post-85. 100%. Right, so you have a few. So you have like Vengeance of Bane. That was one to get. You had like yes. you said before, Death of Jason Todd. That's right. one to get. Right. You have, yeah. you have these moments, but those are also Batman things. Uh -huh. You have these moments where it's like that is you know. Whereas in over at the Marvel side, because especially in the early '90s and late '80s, they were introducing a lot more stuff, and so you every, have a lot more every week. I mean, even like first appearance of Wolverine. Boom. Is what, easy like, to get. Like there's the you know, there's the Punisher, you know, and then you obviously you get towards the much later, and then you get Cable, and you have Deadpool, and you yeah. start getting like we were talking about before Gambit and Bishop, and you know Apocalypse, like it, it's, Apocalypse, yeah, which right. Is what, but what is that? Uh, it's X Factor number four. X Factor five. four, yeah. But like right. when with Spider Man, it's not just characters. It's like first appearance of Black Cat, first time that he lifted the the heavy oh, yeah. thing, the death of Gwen Stacy, like you know, like. Yeah. With certain yeah, characters, that's 72, but it's still like you're like, Oh, I want to collect Flash, I want to get the first appearance of Barry Allen. It's like, well, Oh, well, you're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that for a minute, and, you right? Know, right. It's like, you could, you could, I mean, I have, I have eyeballed, I don't think I'd ever be able to pull the trigger. I think that would be like way down in life. I think we talked about this that like the one of the ones that I'd want to pull the trigger on, I would love to get, I would love to get the first Paris Barry Allen 
and I I know people who have them. Obviously, you know Mark and Jeff, like right? <laughs> it's like people who have them. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's like you know it, it, it's funny when you you think about that, but then it's like then you think about like you know Amazing Fantasy fifteen, yes, and it's like I've seen those many times in the wild, and yes. it's still really ex- obviously crazy expensive. But that's why it's like I have the first appearance of the Punisher. I had the first appearance of Wolverine. Like I have certain things because they were at a moment not Novel. as far back. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's part of where with Superman because it's like you know with Superman, I think you know, Doomsday what? is the last big character. Yeah, the well, the, the full, I think the four. I mean, like you can get you know Con- Connell, uh, yeah. Cyborg, Superman, Eradicator, Steel. Uh, it's but all that same window, I have all of those. Exactly. But you, if same. you were reading Superman, you have all of the, their first appearances. Like yeah, I'm trading card with that. All... <laughs> yeah, it's a tight little window of time. Yeah, but like if you want the first Superman. mixy pick, if you want the first mix of spit, like like you still got to go back seven oh. years. Like, do you want to get the first Supergirl? Do you want to get the first Superboy? You got to go back pretty far. And... Crypto, like it's. I'm trying to think. What is the the last big new Superman character that has been introduced? Post Reign of Superman, right? Oh, Tana Moon. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm trying to think from like, GBS. Uh, oh man, what was the yeah. last time a new character? Now I feel like this is my challenge, this right? Is like long. Brainiac also was back then, so you can't, yeah. And there'd be reintroductions of these characters, especially because totally. once you get post crisis, well, it's weird because you get post crisis and then it was about reintroducing these concepts, yes. And then so it's like, yeah, Supergirl comes back in, in Superman, Batman, right. But that was a reintroduction to that character. And that was hot. I mean, it was Michael Turner. That was a big one. Oh, moment. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a you great know, uh, What about I'm Metallo? Think, I mean, I think Metallo's got to be before that, right? I don't know if Metallo not, was like he, a... He might be 80s, but he's definitely... That's a good question. I have to, I have to look into Metallo's first appearance. I don't know the exact number. Action but Comics yeah, 352. Think, like, that was a 58. Been, I'm trying to think if there has been a villain introduced that has been like... Like the, you know, you look at even like with when Punchline was introduced, when James introduced Punchline, like that was a really big moment where it's yeah. like the sales on Batman like went nuts. So it's yeah. like maybe Lobo. Hmm. No, Lobo was introduced in Omega Man. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, I mean, listen, I love Lobo. Don't get me wrong. Lobo's like my guy. I love Lobo. Yeah. Uh, I, I wonder now. I, I have to like look into this. I'm blanking on something. Someone, someone in the comments is going to be like, you guys are like, how could you forget? <laughs> and they're going to be like, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like these are the well, I look forward to reading them because I want to know like what they like. Yeah, what's key, the... and they have to be key. It can't be like it can't be you know double uh, uh, X. <laughs> you know, it to... uh, it's funny. Double X was somebody that we were going to use, and um, it was funny uh, when Tom and I were we were working on when he was working on Batman. I was working on Flash. We would talk about after the success of the button. We were like, we should do this every year. <laughs> we should do a crossover every year. Yeah, Batman and Flash crossover. That, That'd be so cool. Yeah, it didn't happen. Well, there was there was different conversations we had about stuff. We did one more, the Tides into Heroes in Crisis. But part of the conversation was trying to find the right villain. And uh, we were always like, God. I remember talking to Tom on the phone about it one time. And I was like, dude, I just found out that Double X is an actual Batman Flash villain. Like, it's them together. Is Double X. And he was like, shit, I just used him. And I was like, what'd you use him on? He used him in Date Night. Yes, I remember seeing him in something recently, and not that recently anymore, but I remember seeing Double yeah. X being like, uh, uh, good use of Double X. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to think, I don't know, someone's going someone's gonna, to like, call us out, they're going to be like, you're forgetting these people. But I'm, I'm almost thinking of villains, too. I'm trying to think That's of true. The, if there's like a villain that has been... Like, when was, the, the Parasite was relatively, he's a Jim Shooter creation. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of now. I mean, it's so funny. I was talking to Scott Snyder the other day, and we were we were talking about comic book stuff. And at one point, he made this comment about 30 years ago. And you're like, and I was mm-hmm. like, and I was like, oh, 30 years ago. And then I was like, it was on the phone, and so I was trying to do the math in my head. Mm-hmm. And then I, and then he stopped me. He was like, dude, that was 1994. And I was like, oh. yeah. I was like what? <laughs> what I what suddenly became I became that dude at the end of uh, Last Crusade, where all of a sudden I chose to not choose wisely. <laughs> you drunk the wrong grail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like that all the time. I'm like Turned what? Dust. How old well, was a child? <sighs> well, there was a there was one time we were I was at a um, I was at a convention. This is, this is a long time ago now, uh, but I was at a convention, 
and this is like early in my career and they were interviewing me and we were talking about something and Batman Returns came up as it always <laughs> does. And Naturally. it came up and I was like, oh, well, blah, blah. I don't know the, the, the context of the conversation, but basically I had said in it, I was like, well, Batman Returns came out 10 years ago. <laughs> and the dude was like, no, it was 20. And I was like, is it really 20? And then it clicked on my head and you could see yeah, you... the like, oh God. <laughs> oh God. How long has it been? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, this must have been 2012 because obviously. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm behind. What is <laughs> what is happening to me? Yeah. <laughs> a a, a yeah. moment of like, we're getting old. Yeah. We're all becoming old. One time, uh, Tom and I were talking, Tom King and I, and he made this, it was in San Diego. He made this comment and he was like, he's like, are you and I the old guys with comics now? Hmm. And I was like, I think we are. And then, uh, the next morning, I told this Dan Jurgens. Dan Jurgens was like, "Stop it, both of you, because <laughs> I'm older than both of you." What yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He's like you no. babies, you little like, babies, you nothing. <laughs> it's that it's that line from uh, Starship Troopers where the old man Ace. It's like there's something really funny about Casper Van Dien, age 24, saying that he's the old man in the movie. I know. I'm like, yo, the beginning of this movie, you graduated high school. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> in this yeah, movie. no. But that's the joke, uh, I guess, is that the whole I, movie is I, like, it's yeah. funny you brought up Starship Troopers. I was thinking about watching that recently. I, uh, I I will I will shamelessly plug. I we have a I, I finally have a 4K TV, so I have Starship Troopers on 4K. <laughs> so we you need to text me. I, I have questions about the 4K television because um, it's funny because you you texted me that you were watching Hook on 4K and and literally good. that day I, my 4K hook arrived in the mail nice <laughs> like that day and I was like you and me buddy yeah living. and so uh when it came in the mail but I don't have a 4K television yet yeah you need it I know well obviously yeah yeah well, you, I it's... uh our television is it's funny our TV this last year we have like a I think we have like a 75 inch television in the living room and nice. it slowly started doing this thing where it just turns off randomly oh no and I was like, what the heck? And so I looked it up online and I was like, you know, what can I do to fix it? What's the problem? What's the glitch or whatever? And then the, the first thing I saw was like, this model of television starts to die at seven years. It like just it. starts to die. And then I'm like, what year did I get this TV? And I was like, oh, crap, it's eight years. So we're, <laughs> you know, but the problem is, is that it doesn't look broken. It doesn't look yeah. damaged. It's just randomly every day. It will just randomly turn off. Yeah, that's got to go. Uh, so, but that's the thing. I'm like, where do I put this giant 75 inch television? So I'm, I'm eyeballing. Uh, we'll I'm in the exact yourself. same position. Like I have. A, Where's the TV I, at? I, it's at my studio. But, but you are see, you using it for something then? Are you? Nope. Like... It is in a. It is. It is in the way. But my, <laughs> but my plan, my plan is to build like a like a window around it, and then it'll oh. be like a background thing because it used to be like the the background of back issues like that we used to just put push the couch in front of my television and then oh, i man. and then i chromecast a picture of the comic book we were talking about behind us yeah yeah, yeah. And people were like where'd that post where'd you get that poster and i'm like it's a chromecast occasionally you'll see like a glitch or like the the screensaver come on and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. uh but but now we have green screen but uh yeah it's it's it used to be a fixture of the show and uh so i was like i it's it's like you know it's like a hundred pounds i can't give yeah. it away and it's uh, so it went to the studio and it's just sitting there for now but i'm like maybe i can make it a background like window or something like because it's not 4k it's not even like really hd it's like 1080p that's like the highest yeah know. yeah uh, i replaced it with a similarly sized but much lighter and thinner uh and 4k you know tv and it's uh it's, well oh for like half the cost you know like because i yeah bought, that tv is 10 years old you know oh, man when uh we were at the airbnb the airbnb had a 4k television Mm -hmm. and um they had youtube on it and so all i did was watch movie trailers on YouTube. <laughs> like late at night after the kids went to bed everything's cool and i'm like i just want to chill here for a moment and, like have mm -hmm. some tea or something just a moment before I, I call it quits and i was just watching movie trailers on the 4k television just being like looks good oh what have i been missing like yeah i, I literally watched uh not only did i watch movie trailers i watched disneyland rides Oh, just watching like you know the people do the the videos, the and POV, stuff about, yeah. Just to be like, dude, this is so good. And that was that was the kicker of like, okay, I gotta bite the bullet soon. I gotta do it. But it's more about getting rid of the old one. That's actually I, the, the piece that's slowing me down is getting rid of the old one. It's like, I yeah, have no idea where the TV's gonna go. I would just also, take a picture storm, of it, put it on Facebook market, Marketplace. What's that? Just, just put it on oh, Facebook yeah. Marketplace. Someone will come over and take it away from you. Like. <laughs> 
that's that's more than likely what we will we will do because otherwise yeah but i watched um the trailer for james cameron's abyss on uh dude i, I saw like, it on in yeah, the theater yeah, yeah. the re-release it's it looked like a new effing movie dude watching the trailer for it i was like this looks like this came out today yes yes this looks it, amazing it looks better you know what i mean it looks yeah. better than movies that come out today i was like it says something about, about that era of james cameron james cameron really was like ahead of everybody else he was he was paying attention like he wanted it yeah. to look as good as possible he he made it he made all, all his effects are timeless you know yeah yeah. Well, I, I think I told you before, I'm not like the biggest fan of the um, Avatar movies. I, not I, me I, either. I was actually <laughs> I don't blame you. The first one. Did you did you watch both of them? No, no. I, I saw the, the first one. one was better. Uh, all right. I, don't make me defend Avatar right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, I, I personally, I find it fascinating how much of it is a cultural phenomenon. I think I told you about this is a life lesson because it is a life lesson where you have to recognize that something that you did not enjoy is the highest selling thing in the world. Oh, I, right? every time I hear the list, I'm like, is Avatar still up there? Why? There's number one. And you have to have that moment of like, all right, it, it's it's a life lesson to be like, yeah. just because you don't like it doesn't mean everybody else doesn't like it. Uh, but, but, but Avatar juiced the numbers because they charged twice as much. Oh, was did it? they really? Well, they had to because it was 3D. You had to it was 3D. 3D glasses. It was like, so I'm like, no, you're just as good as any big movie, but you charge twice as much. So you get to be number one. You, oh, you, I didn't, are, know that. you didn't, you didn't legitimately earn that spot. Like <laughs> that's interesting. I did not know that that's new information. Uh, but <laughs> I went and I, I was, I, I waited and I, I waited until Avatar had been in the theaters uh, way of water. So Avatar two, I waited sure. until it had been in theaters for a while and then I went, um, it was so funny, dude. I went at like a 10 o'clock showing, which oh, wow. this movie is like three hours long. So I don't know yeah. what I was thinking. So I went to like a, a 10 o'clock showing and, you know, I, I always joke around with other people. Like, um, uh, I asked this question to their comic book creator one time we were walking and I was like, you like your wife, right? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, me too. You know, cause I, I, uh, my preference a lot of times is uh, to hang out with my wife. Yes. Like, people are like, oh, do you want to hang out with this? I'm like, no, I don't hang out with my wife. Uh, and same. so, yeah, I don't, you're the same, right? Like, you're just yeah. like, no, I, I actually. She's cool and I like her a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to, I, I would like to hang out with her. Uh, she had zero interest in seeing it. And so, a lot of times, the only time I could spend time with my wife is at night because, again, we have, we have young children. So it's like chaos until those kids fall asleep. Totally. Um, but uh, I remember I went, so I went by myself to go see avatar the last night it was in theaters nice because i'm like if i am going to see it i'm going to see it in 3d you have to and i was like 3d plus water is cool because it allows it that it will utilize the 3d really well so i gotta see it and i was sitting in the theater right when the movie started and i was just sitting there and i was like what am I doing with my life? Like, I'm alone <laughs> watching <laughs> Avatar 2 in the theater. No one in the theater. At night. <laughs> Not a single person in the theater by myself. It's kind of cool in its own way where it's like, I'm having this immersive experience alone in this massive screen, but yes, I was there's like, something kind of sad about like being like, did... like, I didn't get to share this with anybody. Like, yeah, well also, how, how did I get here? Like, what happened? <laughs> so I'm watching it and like, I would say like 30 minutes into it, I was just kind of like, I I'm just going to walk out. I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> I would home. totally do this. It's the same late. Thing. It's late. Yeah. I'm tired, you know. But then that movie, I feel like it started to hit like an emotional beat. Mm. And and that's why I would say, like, if I, you know, I definitely think you should watch it and then we should talk about it. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, I'm very curious because I, I heard like different friends who've seen it had different responses, but they a lot of them I heard say the same thing. They were like, the third act payoffs yeah. on an emotional level are good. You have to get to it, though. You have to kind of let yourself get to it. Yeah. And when I was watching it and we got to the third act, I was definitely, like, emotionally invested in the characters. And I was totally. like... And that's something that James Cameron, you know, when you look at, like... You, know, you look at True Lies and how True Lies... You think you think that movie is over. <laughs> right? You're like, yes. oh, it's done. They're right. gonna they're gonna catch him, you know. They're yeah. together, they're cool, and then it's like, nope, he kidnapped your daughter, and it's like, there's this whole other real whole extra part of the movie that's so yeah, this whole worth it. Other third act, right? Yeah, and it's like, but that's how you know Terminator Two, 
is really strong like that. Even though I don't think Terminator 2 has like a, a, a crazy extra no. third act. I think it's just a real amazing movie. Yeah. Uh, 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 but yeah, Back to Abyss, that's the one that is going to be the one that's going to make me get that television. Because it's like, I love that movie and I just, I just want to see it in that. I know that a few people I know went to the theater and they saw it and stuff. And uh, yeah, that's one that I, I definitely really, really want to see uh, in yeah. 4K. Um, I, I mean, seeing it on this big screen for the first, because I, I missed The Abyss when it came out in theaters, um, was awesome. Uh, I know they're re-releasing True Lies in theaters. So keep are they really? for that. Yeah. Well, I will, I will yeah, see. yeah. Well, and what's killing me is Cameron cleaned up and 3D converted Terminator 2 and released it in theaters. And this is going back a couple of years, but like, yeah, yeah. it was the first time I'd seen it in theaters and it was fire. It was so awesome. The 3D it was James Cameron's 3D, but for Terminator yeah. 2. I have and to so, see that. And it, there's no blue, there's nothing. There's no Blu ray. There's nothing. It's just, it, it, you saw it in the theater and then it's gone. There's no oh, disc for Terminator 2. That's actually that. the thing that, that bums me out about this television we have downstairs. Is the television we have downstairs is actually a 3D TV. Oh. And and so, you know, there are certain movies we watched in 3D that were really cool. And it's like now with the 4K television, we won't have in 3D anymore. But we don't, yeah. we don't, we, I haven't watched a movie in 3D in probably, you know, like six years. In, yeah. in that. And I'm like, I have this like stack of 3D movies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I guess you're just, just going to collect us now. Like yep. just, this is this is never going to be ever watched again. Yeah. Uh, I did want to look at some of the comments and if oh, there sure. were any questions last time. Oh, I love so it. I think we did say, I think we did say, so I'm going to see if I can burn through here and find a couple questions. Um, Absolutely. Uh, while we're doing that, while you're getting a couple of questions, I will ask you one more, one question that's just uh, on the top of my mind. It has nothing yeah, to do with anything, but uh, it is... Um, did you ever see the Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie? Yeah, we talked about this in one of the videos already. Oh, we talking about that already? All right. Yeah, we had. I had. I had it on VHS. And it oh, was right. With little four on it. Yeah, I have. Yeah. It. It, yeah. The, the AKA the good Fantastic Four movie. The, good, the best Fantastic Four movie <laughs> they've ever made. Yeah. I saw. Um. I saw this documentary called Doomed, which was like a behind. Yes, the scenes I haven't seen it. It's yeah. not great. Oh really? I would it, just want. It's, it's useful. Sad. Oh, it's, it's, it's not as sad as you'd think because, like, it, well, they were lied to. I mean, that's the oh, part yeah. that it gets like this is a bummer. Everyone thought this was their big break, it was a big thing, and then yeah. it was just like, yeah. I mean, but it was a wizard, man. That was in wizard. I know. That's how I knew it existed at all. And I was like, and I'm like, Doom looks amazing. So yeah, I Doom looks like it. Doom, and he did. He sounded like Doom in a mask. Uh, and the guy who plays Doom is like lamenting. He's like, they didn't. Like they didn't, I didn't come in and do ADR. Like they didn't use it, so it's just it's just him on the day. Oh man, dude! And and it's so rough. And he's like, he's like, if you ever, if they ever release re-release it, if they do release it, call me and I will redo the lines. Oh, that'd be a great idea. They should. I mean, no one's ever going to put the money into that. Uh, especially you never know. You never know. I mean, especially now where uh they're gearing up to do a Fantastic Four movie. I'm telling you, like that is that's a that's a Disney Plus exclusive release. They should have put out during the pandemic. They should have cleaned it up. Oh yeah, Disney Plus. Fun. It's been like we're just doing fun stuff. Yeah. Like, I, if you uh, put out those Ewok movies, you can put freaking Corman's Fantastic <laughs> Four in there. I wonder if there's some kind of weird legal thing with that. I'm sure there's some shenanigans, but somebody owns it. Who? Uh, the the documentary said it. Like they they it was purchased basically. Like oh uh, yeah ah, well uh you know with the um i said this before in one of these videos with you and i'll just say it again we're talking about it. that's the moment with the marvel movies that i'm the most excited about is like the moment we see doom yes like, I, I just want to i i just i want to see dr doom so bad like i, okay. I I'm, I'm dying to know who they cast yeah like you know i don't know who you get that has that kind of like gravitas yeah you know i think at one point they somebody said that they were talking to adam driver or something at one point and... i'd take adam driver i yeah, yeah me too have we, have we talked about this i i mm. wanted to i would i would like lena heady to be dr doom what's he been in no she she Heedy. oh she was a uh, mama in the dread movie she was in oh, game yeah. of thrones i just i want oh, i'm like oh man oh from oh I, that is who that is from game of thrones yeah yeah, yeah. And how'd that be dr doom oh, oh and should... 300 uh yeah, like, no, I know she is. Yeah, yeah I yeah. love her so much, and I'm like, she's so cool, and like, it's one of those things where I, once I got it in my head, like, oh, to make Doctor Doom a woman, I don't, I don't love like on paper. I'm like, oh, that's kind of sacrilege, but then I think, oh, if you get Lady Heedy, it'd be kind of dope. Well, she plays scary really well, yeah. and she'll wear a mask. 
<laughs> yeah, she plays scary really really well yeah. um yeah i love i love watching that movie though i'm trying to think here what else was uh what is in here oh somebody wants us to write a predator script which i'm like yes oh dude yeah ready. that'd be so much fun i would do that after we talked about that i was like we could do this we could do it yeah we could do this. I, I could figure did it you, out. you didn't cat i don't know if you caught it but like we did the tom came on the show and uh i just i just threw him under the bus where i was like so josh and i broke the predator script you hate so much and uh <laughs> He was oh, like, ha- oh, okay. I- I'll talk to him next week about this. Yeah, he, he was, he was like, no, you can't have it on this ship. It's too small. It'll be over in ten minutes. And I'm like, oh no, you just, yeah, it starts on the ship, but it expands. And he's like, okay, well, if it gets off the ship, yes, but you wanted to have it all on the ship. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, you start with two ships. Yeah, the yeah. whole thing is it's one ship and then another ship. And then it goes to the other ship. Yeah, exactly. You know, and the first time you see the predator is when it's walking up the beach. Like oh, that's, yeah, dude, it all comes together. I mean, I know. you know, obviously you don't start in the boat. No, you can't. <laughs> you get to the boat. Exactly. You have to build up. You have to build up why you have to build up why these pirates are something to hunt. Yes. Like you have to build up. These pirates are scary, tough pirates, mm-hmm. and this predator is going to kill them. Yeah. And then you have somebody on there that was like a stowaway or some shit. Mm-hmm. So that stowaway person is like the is the survivor and gets caught up in this whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I'm telling you, rise itself. I know, I know. Hey, right, so Tom and I have like really funny conversations about story uh, uh, sometimes that we, we talk like weekly and and uh, you know we 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 both approach things very similarly, but then we come out from different angles, and so it's just you know yeah. Um, there's somebody asked somebody in here, why do they want to? Somebody put this. They said I want Sal to talk about Gen thirteen with Josh. Oh yeah, wow. well because I read a lot of Gen thirteen as a kid. So did I. Why it's... is this a thing? Oh, because, uh, oh, it might have something to do with Tom, actually, being it get back to Tom, because I remember mentioning it, and he was, I was like, can they bring, he, I, I was like, you could bring back Gen 13, and he's like, no, you can't. Well, hold on, hold on, Tom King? Yeah. You know Tom King did not read comics in the 90s? I, I did not know that. So, you can't talk to Tom about any 90s comics. Oh, Tom has so to yeah. he did not read comic books, and, and it, it was that. the 90s. Yes, yeah, so so, you can... Next time you interview him, ask him about this, because, uh, uh, so years ago... Clay and I, Clay Man and I are having lunch. We're in Boston. We're in Boston and we're having lunch. We're eating, um, we're having crab rolls or yes. lobster rolls. We're having lobster rolls in Boston. Just total, total cliches. We're having a good time. Mm-hmm. And Clay and I start talking about Joe Mad. Right. And we're just like, man, Joe Mad, dude. X-Men, Battle Chasers, so good. Age of mm-hmm. Apocalypse, hell yeah. Like, yeah. Whole conversation about it, right? And then Tom goes, who's Joe Mad? and you're like what true this is not a lie it's a true story and he gets he gets a little embarrassed about it, but he has a window it's probably like six years i always joke it's the 90s but it's not the whole 90s it's right like, it's, it's it's the the one you remember it's the like the the flashiest part yeah it, it's probably he and i have tried to break it down i would say it's almost like 93 maybe even earlier it might be mm-hmm. 92 because he definitely read some stuff at the beginning of image Sure, yeah. I almost want to say it's 92 to 99. That makes sense. Maybe that window, maybe even as far as 2000, because around that time he was an intern at Marvel uh, and DC, so he definitely was like a bit more plugged in, but there is a window where, where he did not read comic books. Yeah. Or he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't reading comic books in this window. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so if you talk to Tom about something like, say, Gen 13. He has no reverence for it. He he's has just no like, reference for no, it. No, he, he, he sees it. Like, when we were talking about it, and he's like, is Gen 13 is not a comic book. Like, it's a it's a bunch of, like, TNA images that don't, like, have any character. And I was like, I don't know if I agree with that. But, you what know. What's that window where it's teenage it's teenage superheroes? I mean, yeah. it's, and it's, it's, Gen, it's, it's, it's Teen Titans, it's Gen X, it's... You know. Yeah, and that was a that was a window where it was that stuff was going on where there wasn't a reduction of younger characters because you have Gen X, you have Gen Thirteen. Uh, I was really a big fan of Newman, New, New Men. Oh, John uh, Burns, New Men. No, no, that's, no, that's Next Men. I'm sorry. No, no, this was well. First, it was Jeff Matsuda, then it was Todd Nock, but uh, Eric Stevenson actually ah. uh, was writing those books. Um, okay. That was when the Extreme Universe was really expanding. You know, I don't. It, it, it was a bit after that. It was a few years after that when like Alan Moore came in and was writing uh, Supreme, Supreme stuff. Like that's that you know. So yeah. it's funny. Like uh, uh, yeah, we've talked before about like I, I think there's a window of creators that were reading comics in a very 
you know, every year was a Batman event. And so that's yep. why some of our brains are wired to be like, there has to be events every year because right. every year was a Batman event or something. It was crossovers. I mean, it's, it yeah. is, it is, I, I feel, you know, I've obviously done a lot of events and crossovers in my time. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely think I will probably do less of it in the future. You know, mm -hmm. I think I'm, I'm out of the event game, but it's like, you know, I will probably do less of that stuff. And part of it is because of me doing these rereads I do. Because I'm rereading a book and then I'm I'm rereading a book from the nineties and all of a sudden it gets like, oh man, it's just like every month is a crossover. Infinity so, Crusade, yeah. Acts of Vengeance, uh Atlantis yeah. Attacks, you're like, oh my god. The, the yeah, one there's that just was, something well the yeah. annual ones, I feel like the annual ones that they, they were not as effective. Like they, yeah, well, they, they are, didn't no, but the infinity okay. events, like Infinity Crusade, Infinity War, like it just just when I'm reading Spider Man, and then suddenly the doppelganger shows up, and he and Hobgoblin mm -hmm. have to kill him, and I'm like, "What is even happening?" That had me with that had me when I was reading the doing the new Warriors reread. Oh yeah! Like, suddenly it was like, "Here's I think his name was Dark Ball, whatever." Like the evil Speed Speedball's Ball evil counterpart. Yeah, yeah. His doppelganger. I, yeah, his doppelganger. You know, it's like when that happened, and you know, it, it is kind of this. It it did kind of be like. What's funny was when I got to that issue. When I when I got to it in the reread, when I got to that issue, the part of me was like, hell yeah. You know why? I remember buying that off the stands. It's like a oh. very clear memory of like it's a Mark Bagley cover, I think. And I was, it might be Derek Robinson. I'm pretty sure it's Mark Bagley. And I was just like, this cover is dope. Yeah. And I still was in that window where, and I feel like sometimes uh, I don't want to say I'm jaded about this, but I still I think people still pop. There's a lot of it now for yeah. like here's the evil version of your hero, you know, uh -huh. the, the, the mirrored version of it. And there was a lot of that in that window and wizards that... would make fun of it. But then, yeah. you know, some of that stuff actually ended up happening. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you think that was like the venomification of everything where they were like, well, venom's just the dark mirror version of, of Spider-Man. Let's just keep doing that. Let's try to replicate that success. Well, yeah. I think that there is that moment where it was like taking this thing that works and then growing it out. And there's goods and bads to that, because I do think you should always add, like, oh. I mean, this, something me just as a, a nerd i think you should always add stuff uh you know you should never try to erase or take away you should just constantly be adding and there's there be i think you can see how people have done this and and yeah it's just always you should always add but so back with gen 13 so yeah so gen 13 oh yeah so gen 13 book, or you just no just yeah i i uh I have a I have a real fondness for it. I I have a real like nostalgia attached to it. I have like the bootleg. <laughs> I, I, no, I have the I have the zine that they published, which is like a yeah. smaller. Like I have uh, I have all this stuff, and I'm I bought the DC reprint of it when uh, when oh, that came really? out, which is like I was like I gotta get at this the 30th I, anniversary. I got all the covers? Did you get all the covers when they came out? I don't think so. Um, I I mean I remember when issue 13 came out, and they had like those the billion covers and yeah. uh, they crossed over with everybody and they like took real heavy pot shots at Liefeld and all this other stuff. Was, that book was, that book was, was big dude. Was that was a big, big book. Big, oh no. The pre-orders for the first issue or the second issue were like 25, 2.5 million or some nonsense well, like that. It was, you know, when you look at uh, that first issue, I mean, it's funny now. Cause you were like, this book has 13 covers. Wow. And now you're like, that's not, is that enough? <laughs> at the time, <laughs> it was such a big moment. Uh, I had all of them, but I, I think I told you a story before where I was at a convention and that was my, this is like my heavy collector days. Yes. And uh, as a kid where I was like, I got all 13 covers. I hunted them down. I, I managed to get all 13 of them. Nice. And I was at a convention and I don't know how, I think it had been a few months later, you know, it was probably like six months into the, the book or, um, and uh, someone had a gold edition i told you this right and they no no i'm just i just remember that gold edition no 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 this was something different it was oh. um <clears throat> so they had a version it was the, it was the issue one cover but where the with the jason campbell art but then when i had the gen 13 logo it was like a gold version of it like it was oh. gold and i okay. was like i was like i have never seen this before and they were like it's really limited it's a very very limited edition it is a gold gold logo edition and i was like i will buy that and i think it was like 10 bucks it might have been 20 and i was like i will buy that because I'm, I'm gonna i was like i'm gonna have every single one of these yeah you know kind of like wildcats they did like share gold foil and stuff like they're harder of fun. course yeah that's that's entirely plausible but i was like no i'm get this but all it was was just the logo it was just mm. the logo and so the convention passes you know pay, pack up whatever and I'm, I'm at home and uh i take it out of the, the sleeve to look at it and I open it up and I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is so weird. Like, it just looks weird. Mm -hmm. And I open it up 
And inside on the first, like the moment you open it up inside is a stencil. <gasps> and you could see what they did was they had made a stencil of the logo and they put it over it and they oh spray God. painted gold. Oh. And that was the gold. And they yeah. were selling bootleg gold logo editions. And yeah. I, as a kid, they got you. They got me. And I'm sure they got a lot of people. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people were like, because that was such a frenzy to get all those covers. And they were like, totally. this is the hardest one to find. And you're like, I'll buy 20 bucks. And all they did was take the original cover and spray paint it. But yeah. they left the stencil in there. Like, I, will, I always remember being like, damn it. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't go to the store and be like, no. Hey, back, you know, and you can't go into whatever. It was like that convention was coming gone. That person was yeah. gone. And, you know, um, yeah, that was wow. that, that was my my Gen thirteen uh, experience. I also really really love Gen thirteen, and I was always trying to find a way to bring it back. And yeah, I always want to see him come back. I I was like I was surprised when like nobody knew what to do with the Legion of Superheroes. It wasn't like oh, wouldn't it be fun to send nineties characters into the thirty first century and make them members of the Legion and stuff like that? But like oh no. yeah, that's fun. I do you know I I love Legion of Superheroes. I'm always trying to figure out um, how to make them work. Always trying to figure out. Uh, Legion of Superhero stuff. Somebody asked me, so would you ever write for film or TV? Is there a lot of roadblocks for comic writers to make that jump? Mm. Not as many as you might think. Uh, I get offers all the time. It does come up all the time. Um, nice. You know, I've talked to people. I have enough connections and friends where it, it does come up. And then it kind of falls on me at that point for me to, you have to do it. Is yeah. really what it is. Like, I mean, if you're gonna do it, you got to do it. It's like anything. It's like if you're gonna make that switch, then then you just got to put pen to paper and make the work, and then you got to break in and you got to put. You just got to do it. Yeah. But you know, I have a lot of friends, obviously, that are uh, writing for film and, and television. You know, you look at, uh, yeah, like obviously Scott with witches. Like, I have a lot of friends. I, I'm like making sure I don't accidentally out somebody for working on Hollywood right now. That, exactly. Like, well, do we, we know we... they're working on that show? Uh, no, no, no. But we know some people are like named or in or in photographs with writers' rooms and stuff like that. Yeah, so but, it's uh, a we we are aware people are working on things, and so it's like I have a lot of friends. I do talk to them about it, and I have a lot of friends that I've I've known for a long time who work in in those spaces, and so it comes up a lot. Yeah, and it's really just a matter of me making the decision and then actually putting uh, pen to paper. But I think part of it is, and I would be curious about this with other other writers I know, and and I was talking to them about this yesterday. I mean, really, if you're gonna make a real go of it. If you're going to make a real, I'm going to work in film and television, you pretty much have to live in LA. Like, I mean, that's, that is the biggest roadblock. And, you know, obviously there's, there's, obviously there's outliers, you know, obviously sure. there's, if there's, you know, and yeah, I think you have to have proximity to those things. And don't get me wrong. Like I'm, I'm like a two hour flight from LA, but I, I don't think I will ever leave Portland, yeah. you know, like I, I really doubt it uh, at this point. Um, and I really just really love making comic books. Like that's yeah. that's the thing that I wake up every day and I get to do and I want to do. Um, it's a very different muscle doing film and television. Like it is a very different is very different and it does become like anything. Like if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it. Like that's your job. You gotta treat it like a job. You gotta show up every day. Yeah. I just don't know if I would ever uh I don't know if I would ever, ever uh show up every day. Yeah. Um let me see here. I'm trying to think of anything in here that I can man, you so can comment about, on. Yeah, time we're getting old. I got to put my readers on. I'm doing this. <laughs> um, let me see here. Did yeah, did did Kirk moment from uh, Wrath of Khan. Oh, I know that is real, dude. <laughs> Coming through now, Khan. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I noticed. I went to. I, I I was having eye strain problems a lot the last few years, so I was oh. like, "What's going on? Like, I'm having these problems, and I thought my prescription was bad, whatever." And and uh, I need to get new glasses. And so I'm in there and doing the whole thing. And then they were like, because I wear contacts. And yeah, and then the doctor was like, no, everything's good. Your eyes are super healthy. Your prescription hasn't changed. And, so, and then she's like, you're just getting old. And Ugh. I was like, what do you mean you're getting old? And she's like, you need to start wearing readers. And I was like, what? Uh, I'm not going to say who it is, but I, I found out after I had the readers that um, – I have uh, uh, very good friends who work in comic books who also wear readers. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, it made me feel better about it. Like, we were yeah. at a restaurant one time, and they, like, busted out their readers. And I was like, oh, great, great. It's not just me. Yeah. Um, oh, good. We'll all take out our readers. <laughs> we'll all be, we'll all be, uh, we'll now all let me be just... old together. Yeah. Let me turn my flashlight on my phone and read the menu properly. Somebody asked them, ever going to be on the couch? And it's like, I would love to do that. That's like, yeah. you talk about this, but you guys are where you guys are located. I'm not I sure that's uh... probably no no it's a we we can say we're in jersey we're very oh, okay, we drop yeah. preferences all the time but uh yeah um 
I don't think I could ever, ever. I don't think I could ever. Um, yeah, I'm glad people liked our pirate ship predator. Right. I feel like if I, 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 I think like Jed Joe is kind of it for me when it comes in to actually not, not like, when it comes to what would you say? Oh, in terms of like franchises and stuff. Yeah, in terms of like uh, you know, uh, like obviously with superhero stuff, that's a whole other, other story. But when totally. it comes to like other other licenses, it's like I think GI Joe is kind of it for me in terms of of licenses I want to do. Yeah, uh, and I've done a Predator story before. I yes. did like a, a story. Uh, ironically enough, the character in that is named the pirate or the the Predator in that nickname is Ahab. So it's like we, I, I totally could do like a sequel and have him be in it. it would be oh awesome. my god, that would be cool. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked a question again about uh, we answered it last time. I think about uh, Maya Ducard and like yes, I do want to bring her in. I actually have a, I, I might have a way. I was trying yeah. to figure it out since Robin, and I'm like I I think I'm I'm close. I think I figured it out. So I'm I'm really gonna try. Um, at this point, I feel like I have to. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm gonna try. Like I'm I'm gonna try. Um. That's really funny. <laughs> uh, people just know we like '90s comics, basically. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <That's what it laughs> I'm like, well, yeah. You know, I really, uh, I really do like that. I really do like '90s comics. You know, yeah. it's like I was, you know, era I was growing up, and 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 it's like, but I'm also not necessarily nostalgic about it. No, you're not like, like well, they they were better, and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some, there's definitely some really really good books in there, but I don't oh. have the same, you know, the kind of like die hard this is this has to be this way but i was gonna say there is one there is one license sort of yeah there is a shared universe thing that has i put this there is a thing that has never really been in comics before Hmm. they never really they've never really had comics before that I would want to do. I'm not going to say what it is because I feel like that is something that I'd actually like to try. But there is something, yeah, that is a a a popular universe. I'll call it that. Yeah, that never really had uh, comic books before. That is something I would. I don't know if I would want to write them, but it is mm-hmm. something I'd like to see. And I think people have tried. I think people have come close and never able to make it. So mm. I'll tell you when we're off. Because yeah. I don't want to stay on here, but there there are things that I'm I'm like a little bit you know precious uh, about. You wanna... Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, man. I mean, this has been a it has been a really crazy month, and as we discussed, like we're uh, you and I have some have some fun plans for the show. I don't think we should say right now what they are. <laughs> no, like, not yet. We want to make sure we nail it down first. Like, exactly. Uh, some fun <laughs> stuff. But yeah, this month's been crazy, and it's like it's been fun working on you know right now this week I'm working on Superman stuff this week and. You know, it's really fun. I'm always trying to find big, big Superman moments. And then yep. it's like, uh, you know, working on Green Arrow has been really great. You brought uh, back Adam on a PO in a really big, fun way that was really super awesome. Yes, sure was- with, uh, with Phil Hester. I mean, that was yeah. really just getting to work with Phil Hester, you know. And and uh, and then, you know, Batman and Robin is is always just a fun book. You know, I'm just trying to do Father and Son Adventures. And it's really lighthearted and, and do escapism. And then, yeah, man, I have so much stuff I'm working on right now. Like, I was talking to my assistant about it, and I was like, I think I have 10 projects right now. <laughs> I'm just trying to like trim it down to a more manageable state. Yeah. It's like my goal for this year. That's a good uh, idea. But uh, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm working on a lot of stuff. I'm really happy about it. And, and like I said before, I just have to, nothing needs to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's just have life. Be just, cool. just let it. Yeah. Like life is, it'll just be cool and stable and nothing. No, no hiccups. Well, I, j- I jinxed myself because uh, uh, basically I, I got really uh, uh, paranoid and um, I, I, I'm always a little superstitious anyway. But right before, so like right before the storm hit, I said to my wife, I was like, you know what I want right now? I want everything to be boring. I just want boring. Yeah. And then the, in the world, the, the universe was like, no, no, no. Like, I'm coming <laughs> for you. Uh, at one point in the middle of the storm, we had, we had got back into the house and uh, the power was flickering. Like oh, it would turn no. off for an hour. So you're just like, it's not there yet. They're still working on it, but it's, it's, we're getting there. And my mother-in-law was in the house and she basically did the like, well, you know, at least the worst is over. <laughs> she did, she did the thing. She did the horror movie thing. It can't get any worse. Like nothing bad's going to happen now. Right. We're good. Yeah. And I was like, 
are you doing? I literally feels like, what are you doing? Why'd you do that? <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Have you never seen a horror movie in your entire life? Like, what? what why'd you just do that to us? Right. And she's like, oh, oh you, you guys, you're, you're being silly. And, and then literally, I kid you not, 30 minutes later, my wife gets a text from a neighbor who lives like two streets over. And they could see from their backyard, they could see trees falling oh in God. our neighborhood. So I was like, okay, I'm going out there. I'm going to find out. So I go out there in the snow. You know, I'm wearing like, you know, snow boots and a big, I'm all, I'm all geared up. Dude, yeah. for like a week, for like a whole week, I was dressed like uh, Kurt Russell in the thing. In the thing. I you not. <laughs> I, had, I had the whole thing, dude, except the hat. I didn't have the hat. You got to get the but sombrero. Like, I had all this stuff and That's I was great. like going up and down the street. So I'm like, okay, where are the trees fall? So I walk up the street and I meet one of my neighbors and he's just like, I had a gigantic tree fall and then hit another tree on its way down and knock that tree down and God. tore up. He's like, thankfully, you know, all it did was land on, on the fences. Like okay. nothing. There was like, there was property damage, but not a house. And, and then while we were talking, a giant branch fell, like not close to us, but like within, I, I can see it. A huge branch fell and missed his neighbor's car by like, this i mean it literally like whoa. yeah and then a tree over here fell a huge tree took out two fences and a gigantic kids play structure oh i mean it was like a disaster I mean, it, <clears throat> yeah and uh so I, I i went back to the house and i was like okay we're okay we're all right you know let's and we make sure our neighbors are good you know and then yeah i walk into the house and i'm like you stop don't say anything ever again. <laughs> no no more. And then she was like, she made some other comment. And I'm like, you need to knock on wood. Like my wife and I knocked on wood and she wouldn't do it. And I was like, Ugh. you, you have to do it now. Yeah. Like you have, you have to do it. And so now I'm like, I'm still paranoid about 2024. <laughs> like At this point, I'm like, listen, it's going to be the birds. At some point, birds are going to smash it through the window. <laughs> yep. It's just, hopefully <laughs> there'll be like, like bird, you know, there'll be sparrows. <laughs> No, I'm just gonna get to work. Oh, oh! Before we before we go, I, I did want to uh, uh, talk about this really quickly. Yeah. What are books that you have read that you have uh, liked the last month since I talked to you last? Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Um, I I would love to get your opinion on this as well. I, uh, in preparation for Tom coming on the show, I re I read the rest of Penguin. Okay, and it's yeah, so yeah. good. Mm -hmm. it's annoying how good it is. I hate it because I'm, I'm behind like, on Penguin. I mean, it's... I read a lot of Tom's stuff. I read, uh, I read that new one, the one he has a dark horse, the Helen of, of Wyndham. Me too. A Wyndham, yeah. yeah. That's not out yet, right? That's it's not out, out yet. No, soon. March, March. Very good comic book. It's good. very good comic book. Yeah, I love good it. Issue one. Yeah, yeah, very good issue one. I read uh, it. And I'm like, I... oh, Tiffany, you're gonna like this one. She's like, uh oh. It's a good I, one. It's good. I still have not read Animal Pound because I can't. I'm like, nope, I'm not gonna be. Sorry. Uh yeah. See, I was really funny. I, I I got the PDF from Tom, and then I texted him. He sent it to me, and then I texted him, and I said. I'm going to read this, but is this a sad comic book? <laughs> he said, and, he also, he did say it wasn't. <laughs> to I me. literally, so I read it. I read it. And then I texted Amelia and I was like, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I read, uh, I read Scott's Dark Dungeon, uh, which I really like. That book me is too. super fucked up, but it's a good it comic is, book. It is fucked up. I love it. it is I, I, I think that's good. Um, I read, uh, uh, this is a it's funny one. I think you and I talked about this. I read Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. Yep, yep. Uh, long title, very good comic book. Um, yes, agreed, agreed. And then I read this book. Somebody else, this is like a, a moment of ego for me, a blind spot for me. But then somebody somebody said they were talking about this book called Dwellings, and I never heard of it before. And somebody was mm -hmm. like, this book is really, really great. And I had this literally moment of like, never heard of this. How great could it be? <laughs> like... <laughs> And so then I was like, so then I looked it up and I was like, actually, I do know what this is. I have seen this. I have yeah. seen it. It's an only book. Ah. Uh. And it, it's a comic book character that's, um, you know, they, they've, they've done a lot of work. And I was like, I've seen some of this, but, you know, this is something they've done recently. And yeah, it's called Dwellings. And I read the first three issues, or well, there's only three issues. And I read all of that. And I was like, man, even with the first issue, I was like, this book is dope. Yeah. Like, just the first issue, I was like, okay, people should read this book. Uh, that was one. I actually just read that. That happened this week. So I yeah. read all three issues this week. And nice. I think they're going to do a collection uh, in April. I think people should check that out. Because that, yeah. one, that one surprised me. I definitely think that, like, 
you have to go into it knowing absolutely nothing and i think it will surprise you but yeah but those are some books that i've i've uh i read recently that i i really uh enjoyed yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. man good, good comic books good job everybody yeah avengers twilight is also good i uh i like oh that. yeah it is good it's avengers yeah. book it's cool it's fun um i i need to re-up i i uh I'm not paying anyone's Substack right now, so I can't read Public Domain. Um, oh, but I know yeah. there's more Public Domain, and I like that a lot too. Yeah, I um, like Public Domain, but that's one that I definitely like. I trade weight on because um, I was getting frustrated. Because it's one of those ones where like I was so engaged in the story. Uh, yeah, with I, I read Brian K. Vaughan's um, Specs Spectators. Oh yeah, I've, I've heard of it. I haven't read it. Uh, it's very good. At this point, there's 225 pages of it, so you can. It's a bit, it's gonna be a big graphic novel when they're done with it. Cool. It's beautiful. It's really interesting. The character's really compelling. I have no idea where it's going, and I think that's a good thing. I don't mean that in a way that's like a bad thing. I'm like no. super curious what he's doing with it. Like, it's just it's it's really interesting, but it's only two pages a week to read. So. Mm, There's little snippets, tough. but even with just that, it's still really really good. Yeah. Don't read it on an airplane. Okay. 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 <laughs> Oh jeez! This is like my. I was talking about about this when we were, when you and I started talking. We were talking about PG thirteen and R all that stuff, and I was having this conversation with somebody else who's like an editor in comics, and uh, we were talking about this. Like, how do you gauge what's too much? And I was like, Can you read it on an airplane? <laughs> Can you read it on an airplane? Because if you can't read it on an airplane, if you if you would be like, Oh no, oh people can't <laughs> see what I'm looking at. Yes, that yes. might be what would be actually considered mature readers. Totally, like, that's oh, where no. you're like. I got a PDF from a colleague. She sent me this book and I was like, I can't read this at home. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I don't know what's up with I, I feel dirty reading. Yeah. Don't hundred percent. No, I mean, um, I, I feel like if you have a certain level of like, you know, uh, there, there's like levels of mature readers. Oh, totally. And none of it's bad. It's just at that moment where you're like, would somebody be offended sitting next to me or would somebody behind me? Like, would I get in trouble on a plane? Basically? Exactly. You yeah. know, like, there's certain uh, limits you might not want to hit, you know. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's funny because like you'll be. This happens sometimes. You're like you're sitting there and then you out of the corner of your eye see somebody else watching something, mm -hmm. and it has like a straight up like sex scene in it. Yeah, <laughs> like... literally, that's quills. I remember seeing quills on an airplane. Mm -hmm. Somebody was watching quills. The uh, Jeffrey, whatever his name is, and uh, I think Kate Winslet. But it's just you know, it's the Marquis de Sade, the movie. Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, 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 this should not be playing. It was a, it was a, what are the choices on the plane? The choices. Yes. Yeah, somebody was watching Parasite uh, one time on the plane. And, and I, I was like, that movie is, there's only one like sexual scene that I can remember. There's only the one. So it's like nothing, but it is, it is kind of a funny thing of like, that was my, in a conversation with somebody, we were talking about the level of, like what you would consider mature readers. Right. And it was it was more of a conversation about violence actually. Mm. And I was like, oh well, I think there's there's certain levels of violence you can get away with and bloodshed you can get away with before you get to like the rated R era. Right. Yes. And, and yeah. different people have different gauges for that. Like some people are like even a a little bit of blood yeah. is is too much. So you're like, okay, you have to gauge it out. But that was yeah. the thing that came to the conclusion on, on the call. I was like you could read it on an airplane and be fine. All right. <laughs> no As you go on the cover, like, you could read this on an airplane, Joshua Williams said. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, all right. On that note, we should we should wrap it up, and then we'll yes. talk again in a month. Yeah. And I'll, when we get off here, I'll tell you about that one. Don't yes, I want to know. But uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that's that's just for uh, for for our eyes only, folks. But we'll see you guys next time yes. with, a, uh, with another episode of All Stars next month. But in the meantime, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you guys then. So long, everybody.